You are listening to the Hiking Radio Network, where we talk the walk with shows by hikers about hikers for everybody. This is the Hammock Hangers Podcast, where we hang out and talk about everything from hammocks and hammock camping to the group hangs from around the country. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Hammock Hangers Podcast. My guest this week is a good friend of mine and a fellow podcaster, Julie Gayhart. I wanted to bring Jester on the show this week so that we could talk about the Woods Hole Weekend that her, Mighty Blue, and myself are going to be presenters at. I also wanted to hear how Jester felt about spending time in her hammock as well, since she is fairly new to hammock camping and is trying to move away from a tent. Let's get started and hear about this amazing weekend and Jester's feelings about hammocks. All right, everybody, we are back with um, our guest this week, which is a very good friend of mine. Um, we became friends a couple of years back, I think. Um, but anyhow, she's a good friend of mine, a uh, fellow podcaster, and also my, uh, might as well pretty much say, podcast teacher. Oh my. I guess we can say. <laughs> um, so anyhow, we are here with Julie Jester Gayhart. Hey, Paul. Welcome, Julie. Jester. I don't even know why. I've never called you Julie. Uh, that's weird, isn't it's it? It's always Jester. It's <laughs> yeah. It's very odd. Hmm. Well, you have to say my name formally. Even when I say Julie, it makes no sense anymore. Right. So there you go. Right. I mean, I, I know you as, as Jester. I know, you know... Steve is mighty blue. I don't even know that I've ever called him Steve. Yeah, that's weird too. Yeah. Yeah, I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> so anyhow. <laughs> um, so I guess, you know, what I want to talk to you about today is um, we're getting ready to go on that Woods Hole weekend. Yes. Up at uh, Woods Hole Hostel in Virginia. Um, which actually this episode here, we should actually be there while everybody's listening to this episode. Yes, I'm excited. So, um, I know you and Mighty Blue have gone, what, two years? Y'all y'all have had this going on for a couple of years? I know you took like a, a one year off because of COVID. Yeah, well, we actually started um, the original, how far you want me to go back? You want me to go way back how this started uh, for COVID sure. and then kind of how we got into this. So originally back in co during COVID times, you know, a couple years ago, everybody uh, probably knows or is familiar with um, the Appalachian Trail, you know, Pacific Crest Trail, Continental Divide. And yeah. when COVID was going on, all the trails were shutting down and uh, conservancies, uh, associations were uh, encouraging hikers to get off the trail. Right. And because of that, because nobody knew what was going on, nobody knew, um, you know, what this COVID was or how contagious it was or or what was going to happen, um, you know, it was encouraging for hikers to get off the trail. And the ramification for that is um, the hostels, uh, small town business owners that some of these trails um you know, some of the trails go through these small, through small towns. Um, there was no hikers to come and buy food, resupply, stay in hostels. So needless to say, that was a tremendously bad year for specifically hostels on the Appalachian Trail. Right. And Woods Hole Hostel is probably um, one of uh, the hostels on the AT that everybody looks forward to staying at because it is more of um, the owner, Neville Harris, considers her place uh, more of a communal experience. And what that means is everything that happens there, everybody does it together from the communal, communal meal at night, uh, cleaning up the dishes, helping clean up the place, um, taking care of the grounds, you could do work for stays and it's just this place that you go to and it has this vibe. You never want to leave. Um, right. It's just one of those places. Oh, I remember, yeah. I remember that whenever I stopped there. 
during my 2012 hike. Yeah, and Neville just, I mean, she is just the mother hen of all Appalachian Trail hikers. It's like, it doesn't matter what problem you have or, you know, what you try to solve or what you try to get away from or, you know, if you're having a bad day on the trail, as soon as you get down to Woods Hole, it just seems like all that goes away. So during 2020, the reason that we started doing this, it's called the Woods Hole Weekend. And what it is, it's a retreat of workshops for those that have a future interest in either through hiking, section hiking, or even uh, platinum blazing the Appalachian Trail. And we started that to raise funds for the hostel. And uh, okay. we actually had two or three hostels involved. And this time is going to be the same deal. Um, Weary Feet, which is 10 miles north of uh, Woods Hole, uh, we utilized and stay there and had a fabulous lunch there. And then uh, Tina from Quarter Way Inn in our first year, which is, uh, I think Tina is almost 40 miles uh, south of Woods Hole. Um Came now are these trail miles? And say that again. Trail miles. Are these trail yes, miles? trail okay. miles. I, I should okay. have. Uh, yes. So hiking miles. So okay. the hostels in that area are very well spaced apart. They work very well together, meaning they're a tight knit. Um, they also work very well with the shuttle drivers in that area. And just we wanted to get together and kind of give back to the trail. So the creation of Woods Hole Weekend in conjunction with Neville uh, just kind of happened. And we threw it out there on the Hiking Radio Network that, hey, if you're interested and you want to hear from other hikers that have through hiked the trail, that have section hiked the trail, come this weekend. We're going to have a slew of workshops You'll get to hang out with us until you're sick of us for three and a half days. <laughs> um, it's pretty much open access to all of us because we're going to be hiking together. We're going to be camping together. We're going to be sharing our own individual stories with everybody on how we completed the trail in our own way. And it's just a really good communal way to learn how or get ideas to fulfill your dream of either through hiking or section hiking the Appalachian Trail. Okay. That was a long now, story. <laughs> <laughs> well worth it though. So that was the, the first year. Yes. Right? Now that was what, 2020? That was 2020. And last year, 2021, okay. I did not go because um, I was at the Alda weekend in Abingdon, Virginia. So Did they have it last year, though? Uh, they did, yes. Did they? Okay. Um, okay. I did not go, and Mighty Blue was not able to make it last year. I had already committed to um, giving a workshop about the Mountains of Sea Trail at Alda last year, so I was unable okay. to go, and it made me sad. So we're back. Awesome. And making awesome. it happen, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And then I know uh, you reached out to me uh, a few months back about uh, joining in. Yes, and because we needed our resident hammock expert because none of us are hammock experts. <laughs> and I and, was like, uh, oh, I know a hammock expert. And he completed the Appalachian Trail in 2012. Yep. So Skunk Ape, here you are. That's it. And I am very happy to, to be going along as well. So what all, what all happens um, during the Woods Hole weekend? So um, I know you mentioned some hiking and stuff like that. Yeah. So I'll give everybody a rundown. This is kind of an okay. ad. It's going to make everybody sad because we're there. Um, but this is something <laughs> that you can put on your calendar for 2023. If you have dreams and aspirations of completing the Appalachian Trail. And so what we do, so it is going to be October 6th through the 9th. And it starts um, on Thursday the 6th. And what we do is we meet at Weary Feet Hostel. Everybody kind of meets there around noon. And we have lunch at the hostel. And it's a good spot for everybody to leave their car, 
kind of meet each other for the first time, get your pack ready, have lunch together. Um, <clears throat> Julie, the hostel owner, she will speak with us and kind of tell, um, you know, the ins and outs of her hostel and why she started, decided to start the hostel. And from there, we will actually walk up on the Appalachian Trail a couple miles and we are going to camp out at Dismal Falls. Um, and once we get up to Dismal Falls, uh, we will, you are going to do a fire uh, making session with us. We're yep. going to do um, Leave No Trace, the seven Leave No Trace principles. We are going to go over hanging a bear bag. We're going to go over proper campsites. We're going to go over uh, water treatment. We're going to go over different styles of stoves. We're going to go over... You know, some people that might be joining us, Paul, they may have never even set up a tent um, or their hammock system. So we right. are going to, uh, the last time in 2020, we had individuals that really had never camped out overnight. And that oh, wow. was one of their fears that were keeping them from fulfilling their dream of um through hiking the Appalachian Trail. So we helped people overcome their fear of, you know, okay. camping out at night. And, you know, we talk about animals and, and things like that. So that first night is a lot of fun. Um, awesome. Because, you know, a lot of people, just like all of us, you know, they've got the 40 pound packs, even though we're only going out for one night because you pack your fears. So yep. we will go over all of that. And then um, on Friday morning, we'll hike the two miles back down to Weary Feet, get our cars, and head on over to Woods Hole Hostel, where everybody will kind of get settled in. Um, the participants, they can stay inside the hostel in one of the rooms. They can stay in the bunkhouse. And for those of us, the presenters, we're going to be either tenting or hammocking. And then all day Friday, all day Saturday, and even into Sunday, we are going to be hosting and holding workshops on anything and everything you can think about when it comes to fulfilling your dream of hiking the AT. Awesome. And Austin from Side Trail Adventures um, YouTube channel is going to be there as well. Video one, correct? Yes, he has a new role. Um, so he's going to be running around like a crazy person. <laughs> and he is going to video the experience um, from day one, all of us meeting each other to the day we leave and we are all best friends and we're high fiving and cheering each other and, and cheering each other on as the participants leave. And, you know, they go on hopefully in 2023 or 2024 to fulfill their dream of through hiking or starting to section hike the trail and uh, I'll tell you what, I'm still in contact with uh, that first class of 2020. I still correspond every once in a while with individuals um, that came to that session. And I should also say we have had several from that session complete the trail. So That's what I was fixing yeah. to ask you if uh, any of them had, had uh, gone gone on and completed the trail or started their section hiking at the trail. Or yeah, they have. And there's actually a couple. It's pretty awesome. Um that decided that they wanted to platinum blaze the trail, which meant they were not going to spend um, one night out on the trail if uh, unless it was absolutely necessary. And um, I think they were part of Mighty Blue's class of 2022, and I think they started their platinum blazing section hike last year. So that's cool. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And so now... Um you're going to be out there also <laughs> in your hammock, oh, correct? I, <laughs> I'm going to try. Uh, I am still just so new to the hammock territory. And I and you're my teacher. So I might be helping educate you on podcasting, but you are certainly my teacher um, when it comes to the hammock world. And in fact, before we got all this chat, I was like, uh, Paul, you're going to have to help me at Woods Hole because I don't know if I remember <laughs> everything about my hammock. <laughs> well, we'll get you past it all. So, yeah, for for uh, 
I've, a lot of y'all have probably heard uh, Jester's podcast and uh, heard her and I talking about about hammocks and stuff like that and how I got her into hammocking. Yes, um, she did. And everything. And then uh, you actually came down to Hancon last year. And uh, so... But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have you in your hammock and um Yeah, and I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys my hammock is deluxe. I mean, it is I mean, it's per, it's deluxe. And but the problem is I'm still not comfortable with it. I and it's weird. I know that seems weird to you, Paul. Um <laughs> but I'm just not. And I think it's because I still haven't gotten in a rhythm to setting it up. Right. Yeah. Well, you haven't you haven't really had anybody to go out with you, and I'm sure I'm sure you have a fear of getting out there and not being able to get it set up right and all that stuff. Um, so, and that's where um, when we're out there for the woods whole weekend, I'm gonna I'm gonna force you to stay in your hammock, and it's just I'm repetition. Let, I'm not even gonna let you bring a I'm not even gonna let you bring a tent. Well, I'm bringing a tent. Just you don't gotta have backup nope. plan. Plan B. Nope. Nope. No tents. <laughs> It, it will I am be, not going to carry your, a tent to Dismal Falls. I will promise you your, that. Your tent, your tent will be at weary feet, waiting for you to get back. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I, like I said, my hammock is pristine. I love it. It is from uh, R and R Hammocks. My quilt and my under quilt and how everything goes together, and I feel like I am in a cocoon. I'm telling you, I'm actually excited to sleep. Well, that's why I think once you once you get out there, you know, of course, I'm going to help you set it up. Yeah, well, it's my stuff. tarp. I don't. It's just the tarp. I, I don't. I have this block about the tarp. I don't know why. Well, we we'll get you past that too. <laughs> but I think once once it's set up and we all get ready to to turn in for the night, and you pile up in the hammock and you get all nice and toasty and and everything else and and get all snuggled in and you get one of the best night's sleep that you've ever had. I know. You, you, you probably won't even think about that. that no, that the next morning, thing. everybody's going to be that like, well, thing. is Jester up? We're heading back down to weary feet. Like where? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll probably have to wake you up. <laughs> you know, and I will say, and this is probably as I have gotten older, 10, 15 years ago, you would not have convinced me to get out of a tent. I, I mean, I'm a full-blown tent right. person. But as I have gotten older, the thought of rolling out and rolling on the ground is just not appealing. So I will figure out the tarp um, and a well, system I mean, this, that works for yeah. me. Yeah. I, I, I enjoy being able to wake up and just turn my legs. And now I'm sitting in my chair. If um, you know, I, I don't drink coffee, but I know, you know, a lot of, a lot of people that do, they have their, their, you know, pot or their, their little camp coffee maker sitting right there next to the hammock and they just turn and start it up while they're still lounged in their hammock. And then, I mean, it's, it's a, no, it's I don't a know if I've world. perfected that. I'd be afraid I'd roll right on out on top of my coffee oh. while it was boiling. <laughs> 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 you have to admit, though, Paul, there is an art to this. I yes, mean, there yes. is. There is. And I think this, I think a lot of people, um, that's one of the, the biggest issues that some people have is they get overwhelmed um, because of the amount of, amount of stuff there is with a hammock, you know, that you can do to customize everything. Um, but there's, you know, there's, you know, 12, 15 pieces that all look different, that all do the same thing. And, you know, you just got to choose what one works best for you. And so, I'm still learning that because every time you show me a new buckle or exactly. a new piece or a part or a component, um, I'm like, ooh, do I need that? Um, but that's just going down, you know, a different gear rabbit hole than what I'm used to. But I will say right. one of the things that I'd like to do with all of my gear is I'm not the kind of person, I don't buy new stuff every year. Um, because as a section hiker or someone um, that goes out on longer trips, 
maybe three or four times a year versus going out for six months. I like to have my gear, throw it in the bag and go knowing, um, you know, I know my gear, I know what I'm used to and the hammock, I'm just not used to it yet. And I know it will come. I just have to put the time sure. in. It's just like learn, you know, it's just right. like, if you want to become a cyclist, you got to put the butt time in. Right. So right. I got to put the hang time in like, and one of the things that I started doing was practicing, okay, just hanging the hammock, you know, by itself. Don't worry about the tarp or, right. and then just hanging the tarp by itself and don't worry about the hammock. And kind yeah. of, you know, doing that. And then it doesn't seem so overwhelming. Well, that's the way to do it. I mean, you know, break it down into pieces and, you know, just go from there. But, you know, and uh, the, the more you, the more you play around with it and, you know, the, the different videos and stuff like that that you can watch, um, the more comfortable you're going to become with it. And then, of course, you start seeing more and more different gear and everything else. Like, I mean, before we started talking, I, you know, I know I've swapped out your um, suspension system to the uh, the cinch buckles. Yes, but those whoopee we're slings talking, were not doing it. I know they're lighter and people love them. I just I didn't understand them, and I will eventually. I just I'm not sure. ready. You know, and then uh, while you know, before we started recording, I showed you the the birch buckles from autumn outdoor gear i know and that was a mistake you know because i started yeah, thinking you know. about I'm, I'm thinking about those right now well i mean that's 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 how you and i work you know <laughs> you come you see some you you know shoot me a, a link or something like that or tell me about them and you know there goes that rabbit hole there and then yeah. i you know reciprocate and yes. send you a couple of links <laughs> and i'm still <laughs> you know? trying to figure out i really like uh, is it the wasp? The wasp, yeah, the Dutch it, yeah. wasp, or yeah. I call it the yeah, wispy. The I've renamed it the Dutch. Wispy. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's the Dutch wispy. <laughs> I, I now call it the Dutch wispy. But that thing is an engineer little piece of genius. Yeah. Um, and I'm already scared because I forgot how to use it already. Um, so, yeah. So, this I mean, week, you're going to show me how to use that again. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, there's, you know, that's that's one, you know, you got the Dutch wasp, but then there's, you know, tactical toggles and, you know, a couple of other things that you can use that they all do the same thing. You just got to figure out which one works best for you. Yeah. You know. And I think I know um, something else um, that I will probably, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, so my bug net is a separate piece. Yep. And... That might be good this weekend because I'm not sure there's going to be a ton of bugs out. I may not have to right. utilize it. You may not even have to use a bug net at yeah, all. Yeah, but we'll see. Um, but I think, see, this is where the hammock rabbit hole comes in because, so I have that set up to where I don't need the bug net and I can just roll it down or slide it over or whatever, whatever down, we yeah. call it. But I also think I want a hammock where one is actually attached already. Attached. Yes. I don't know what that's called. So attached bug net. Yeah, well there you go. <laughs> um <laughs> and there I'm going down a whole other rabbit hole. And then I'm like, well, see, Austin has a hammock where you actually lay flat or you can lay on your stomach. And I'm like, I don't know. I might end up going down that rabbit hole. Yeah, so. he has the uh, the war bonnet ridge runner. Yeah. Uh, bridge hammock. So, so yeah. Which I, I during during uh, the Woods Hole weekend, I plan on bringing probably at least five of my hammocks, um, you know, different styles. That way I can show, you know, from the, the ultra light hammock, which is my Cloud 71 hammock, to my more Cadillac uh, style hammock, which would be the Clark hammock. Maybe that's what mine um, is. It's a Cadillac is, hammock. I like it that way. Which, yeah. you know, the... the you can go ultra light or you can go more car camping, which I mean, even with the, the Clark, um, I mean, I used that for my, my through hike in 2012. Um, a lot of people will tell you, Oh, that's too, too heavy of a hammock. Well, I didn't think so. Well, they're not I mean, carrying I it. You are. It, yeah. I, I carried it the whole way. Yeah. And I, I mean, I kind of loved it because, um, you know, certain times whenever I did have to, not really have to, but whenever I chose to stay in a shelter because of weather or something like that and didn't feel like setting up, 
I used my hammock as a pillow, you know, so it kind of doubled. But, um, yeah, I plan on, like I said, bringing, you know, at least five of my my hammocks up. I, I'll probably end up having them all because I just throw everything in totes. Um, but you'll see the different ones. You'll you'll see the the chameleon. You'll see the the um, my hammock from from Wahala hammocks. Um, you know, of course, I got my R and R and you know Clarks and all that stuff. Um, so you'll see several different types. And then uh, the only one that I don't have right now is a bridge hammock. But um, I think you said earlier that. Austin's going to be bringing his, yeah. so you'll be able yeah. to see a bridge hammock. Yeah, that'll you know? be cool. I, I've got a bad feeling once I see that. That's the problem. I'm going to yeah. need multiple like you. Just mm-hmm. like people mm-hmm. get multiple tents depending on where they're going to go. You know, hey, if you're going yeah. out, you know, with a couple people, you need a two person. If you're going out by yourself, you need a one person. Same thing with hammocks. I'm learning that. Well, yeah, with, with hammocks, you know, you need a green one. You need a blue one. You, you need... need- <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you know that's the thing you can custom detail these things yeah, i love the combine is bright orange man i'm not gonna miss seeing that thing i mean you can you can i'm have, ready for hunting you know, season through you know you got dutch and you got trailheads and all them you can do uh, what's called print to fabric to where you know you got they they have um you know different designs and stuff that if you wanted to print it on there you could and uh um I mean, I think you can even go as far as if you have an image that you wanted on there, you could, you know, send them the image and they will print that onto the fabric. And you can have, you know, your underquilt or your tarp or the hammock itself with that that design printed on it. Custom printing. So, I'm not there yet. I got to um, figure out how to use the Dutch Wispy before, the Dutch, Dutch before Wispy. I go. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh God. Oh, Dutch, I'm sorry if you listen to this. I, I know it's the wasp, but for some reason I don't know. From day one it's been the wispy thing. It's been the now what do I do with this thing? <laughs> but I mean when you figure it out, it's awesome. It's like yeah. wow. I mean that really stays Quick. taut and you don't have to worry about yep. a thing. Genius. Yep. Genius. Yep. So but um, yeah. So I can't. I can't wait. I can't wait for for next week. I feel like a, a kid on Christmas Eve. I know. I know. I think I said I'm. I feel like I'm getting my big wheel. Uh, <laughs> tomorrow morning, you know, we get ready. You know, we get to go to Woods Hole, and you know the the Woods Hole is just a magical place anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah. It is. So it's really. I know it's going to re-energize my spirit. Um, it's that kind of place and, you know, give me a drive, um, you know, to go out and do the hiking that I want to do in the future. And I've never gone or I've never walked away from Woods Hole, not feeling just re-energized, re-energized, peaceful, right. um, yep. you know, ready to take on whatever was bothering me in the first place when I got there. It's just that kind of place. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Neville, she's, she's one of the, the most kind hearted people you'll ever meet. Yeah. So, but, all right. Anyhow, Jester. Um, I know we could go I'll, on and on. Yeah. Sure could. <laughs> um, but I will see you, well, less than a week. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it, Paul. Thank you for having me on. And uh, I appreciate you coming on. Congratulations on your podcast. I think you're doing a phenomenal job. Appreciate it. And uh, so, all right. Well, we will see you next week then uh, up at Woods Hole. All right. I'll be there with my wispy. <laughs> all right. We will see you there then. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jester, for coming on to my podcast and chatting about the Woods Hole weekend some and how you feel about getting ready to spend some time in your hammock. It's always a blast talking with you. I can't wait to meet up with everybody again and hang out some and have an awesome time. If you want to hear more from Jester, you can head over to the Hiking Radio Network's website and listen to all of her shows. There is also Mighty Blue on the Appalachian Trail, the Trail Dames podcast, and Hiking Unfiltered that you can take a listen to as well. And if you like what we're doing here on the Hiking Radio Network and want to see our shows continue, 
please consider supporting us with either a one-off or monthly donation. You will find the donate button on each of the Hiking Radio Network pages at hikingradionetwork.com. Also, don't forget to leave a review and share the show on your social media to help the show grow. Until next week, happy hanging, everyone. Happy hanging, everyone.